today's lesson is all about diseases associated with human reproductive system. Now let's discuss infections. Infections are the most common problems associated with the reproductive system in adults. Vaginal infections are more common in young and elderly women and those whose resistance to diseases is low like Echerichia coli which spread through the digestive tract and then the sexually transmitted microorganisms such as syphilis, gonorrhea and herpes virus and yeast fungus. Pelvic inflammatory disease and sterility are also the effect of vaginal infections. For males, the most common inflammatory conditions are prostatitis, urethritis, and epididymitis, STD, and orchiditis. Now, let's proceed to the major threat to reproductive organs. The first one is neoplasms. Then, the tumor of the breast and cervix cancers in adult females and prostate cancer in adult males. So, neoplasm is another term is the tumor. So, there are two kinds of tumor, the benign or uh, and malignant. So, benign means it, it is non-cancerous. Now, most women hit the highest point of their reproductive abilities in their late 20s. Example, irregular ovulation and shorter menstrual periods. And this is what you called as the menopausal period. The production of estrogen may continue after menopause, but the ovaries finally stop functioning as endocrine organs. The reproductive organ and breast begin to atrophy or shrink if estrogen is no longer released from the body. With this case, the vaginal becomes dry that causes intercourse to become painful if frequent and the vaginal infections become increasingly common. Now these are the signs of estrogen deficiency. The first one is irritability and mood changes or sometimes it may cause to uh, depression. Second is intense vasodilation of the skin's blood vessel. Next is gradual thinning of skin then loss of bone mass the next is slowing and rising of high blood levels and other and many other symptoms depending on the uh, women and then we must take note that there is no counterpart for menopause in males Although aging men show a steady decline in testosterone section, their reproductive capability seems unending. Healthy men are still able to father offspring until they're 80 and beyond. Now let's proceed to erogenous zones. It refers to part of the body that are primarily receptive and increase sexual arousal when touched in a sexual manner. For example, the mouth, the breast, the genitals, and the anus. However, erogenous zones may vary from one person to another. Some people may desire and enjoy being touched in certain area more than the other area like the neck, thighs, abdomen, and feet. And what is human sexual behavior? It is defined as any activity, solitary, uh, between two persons or in a group that induces 
or brings sexual arousal. This behavior is classified according to gender and number of participants. Now, these are the two types, the solitary behavior and the social sexual behavior or more than it involves more than one individual now solitary behavior it is a self gratification begins at or before puberty means self stimulation that leads to sexual arousal and generally sexual climax this takes place in personal and private as an, an end in itself but can also be done in a social sexual relationship this is common for males but becomes less frequent or is abandoned when social sexual activity is available therefore self gratification is most frequent among the unmarried however this self gratification usually decreases as soon as an individual develops social sexual relationship Nowadays, humans are frequently being exposed to sexual stimuli, especially from advertising and social media. Some adolescents become so much aggressive when they respond to such stim stimuli. The rate of teenage pregnancy is recently increasing. The challenge is to develop self-control so that to balance suppression and free expression why because you have or we must prevent premarital sex and acquire and to prevent acquiring std or sexually transmitted diseases now what is social sexual behavior it is the greatest amount of social sexual behavior that occurs between uh, only one male and one female this usually begins in childhood and may be motivated by curiosity such as showing or examining genitalia physical contact involved necking and petting is considered as an ingredient of the learning process and eventually of courtship and selection of a marriage partner Petting dif differs from hugging, kissing, and generalized caresses of the cloth body and to produce stimulation of the genitals. This is done due to affection as a source of pleasure preliminary to coitus, which means an insertion of male reproductive organ into the female organ. This is regarded as an important aspect in selecting partner but also a way of learning how to interact with another person sexually a behavior may be interpreted by society or individual as erotic depending on the context in which the behavior occurs example kissing as a gesture of intimacy between couples while others sees this as respect and reverence and that's the end for this topic now let's go to the summary so we discuss first is infections then major threat to reproductive organs and uh, erogenous zones and then human sexual behavior